This video is going to teach you how to convert Lewis structures into line structures. Line structures are sometimes called bond line structures, sometimes called skeletal structures, and sometimes we use the word notation instead of structure, so line notation or bond line notation. The line structure is one of the many methods that we have for representing organic molecules. In the previous video, we looked at four of the different methods for representing organic molecules. And so in this video, now we're looking at the line structure, which is the fifth method for representing organic molecules. And like I said, what I'm going to do is teach you how to convert a Lewis structure into a line structure. So we're gonna start by drawing a Lewis structure and it's going to be a pretty simple molecule. We've got, we're going to have a total of four carbons in this chain. One of the carbon atoms, the second one over, is going to have a chlorine on it, but the rest of the atoms are just going to be hydrogen. So that keeps it pretty simple. And we are going to turn this molecule into a line structure. So the first time that we do this, the, our, our very first converting Lewis to line, it's actually going to be easier for us to erase components off of the Lewis structure. So what I am doing over here is redrawing the Lewis structure so that we can come through and we can erase things off of the Lewis structure. And so over here, we're going to make a list, a sort of a, a tip tips or I don't want to say rules, but maybe I'll put rules in quotation marks um, or methods for drawing line structures. For the most part, we will always do things exactly the same when we're drawing a line structure, but occasionally we'll make a variation, which is why I want these quotation marks around rules. So first of all, first thing that you need to remember is that we do not draw we will omit hydrogen atoms that are bonded to carbon. This is not, we are not omitting all hydrogen atoms in general. We are omitting hydrogens that are bonded to carbon atoms. So when we're looking at the Lewis structure, if we see a hydrogen atom and it is bonded to a carbon atom, then in the line structure, we will, we will not show that hydrogen. So what I'm doing right now is erasing all of the hydrogens that have been bonded or are bonded to carbons. So we're getting rid of them. Second tip or rule is that we will not draw the carbon-hydrogen bonds. So since we are leaving out the hydrogen atoms that are on those carbons, we're also going to get rid of those bonds. So what I'm doing now is erasing the bonds that were going to the carbon atom. So we've got this thing pretty slimmed down. And then the last thing, this is the third and the last thing, we do not use any sort of atomic symbol for carbon. We just don't draw anything for the carbon atoms. So what I'm going to do now and last is erase the C's that we're using to represent the carbon atoms. Now, this is what we're this is what we're left with and this is not done because we need to make it look better than this, but this is it in a nutshell. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is after we've gone along and erased all of those carbon atoms, how do we know that they're still there? Or how, how would we know that they're there? Well, what we see are these holes, these places where we have bonds that are not attached to any atom. Everywhere that we see a bond that is not attached to an atom, we know that at one time there was a carbon atom there or in the actual molecule, there's a carbon atom in that spot. So those carbon atoms are implied. Now, in the line structure, we do not draw the line structure as it's shown here with all of these individual separated 
bonds, lines that are drawn like that, we actually will connect the lines together to each other like this. Now, by doing that, what I've just done there created a problem because by connecting the lines together to each other, I got rid of those gaps that we were relying on to show us where the carbon atoms were. The gaps are gone. So how do we know exactly where or how many carbon atoms were located along this line since we've connected all of them together? So what we do, let's get rid of those connected lines. What we do when we're in this situation right here is we do connect the atoms, the, the bonds together, but when we have bonds that are connecting together, like these two are about to connect together like that, in a straight line that doesn't allow us to distinguish one bond from the other, what we will do is take, I'm going to take this bond right here, we will take that bond and we will draw it at an angle instead of drawing it straight. And in fact, we just kind of like to draw all of our bonds at angles just because the symmetry is really pretty. So let me take let me take this bond right here and I'll go ahead and angle that one as well because that makes it look nice and pretty. And I've got well, that's a pretty good looking molecule. Um, but what we really like to do is like super zigzag our bonds. So what I'm going to do is redraw both of those bonds. I'm going to redraw this one and then I'm going to redraw that one as well and make them really angled. I'm going to draw like that and then I'm going to draw it like that. And that is the line structure for this molecule. Now what we need to do is, is just look at more examples. So we're going to draw another, this time I'm going to draw a partially condensed structure. So I'm not gonna draw a full blown Lewis structure. And let's convert this molecule into line notation. Now, if right now you're feeling like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what just happened. That's very overwhelming. That's very confusing. Don't worry. That's, it's normal. Um, you'll get the hang of it. You just need to see several examples. So here, this molecule, we're going to turn into a line structure. Now, what we have to remember is that we're not going to show any of these hydrogens at all because they're all attached to carbons. And we're also not going to draw the carbon atoms. We're not going to draw the letter C to represent the carbon atoms. But we are going to show our bonds. So we're going to show this carbon-nitrogen bond. Let's draw that guy first. We're going to draw the carbon-nitrogen bond, and I'm just going to put it at an angle like this. I am not drawing the carbon atom that's right here, but I am drawing the nitrogen atom because that's not one of the atoms that we omit in a line structure. So now let's move, let's continue moving through this molecule. Let's go, let's draw this part of the molecule next. So remember, we're not drawing any of the hydrogens because they're all attached to carbons, and we're also not going to use the letter C to represent this carbon, but we are going to draw the nitrogen-carbon bond. So it's right there, just like that, and let's keep going. Now let's draw this portion of the molecule. We need to draw a nitrogen-carbon bond, but we're not going to draw the carbon. We're just going to draw the nitrogen-carbon bond. So let's angle that guy this way. And this carbon right here is in this place in the molecule. Now we need to draw the carbon-carbon bond between these two guys right there. So this carbon right here is now located out here, the end of the structure. There it is. Let's keep doing more examples. Let's do, let's do something that is like a triangle shape. So this is another partially condensed structure. 
like that. And let's convert this to a line structure. So first of all, looking at the hydrogens, all of our hydrogens are connected to carbon, so none of those hydrogens are going to be drawn, and the carbon-hydrogen bonds are not drawn as well. This carbon atom we are not going to represent because we don't use the letter C to represent carbons in, in a line structure, but we are going to represent this bond between those two carbon atoms. So I'll start with that. And the carbon atoms that are connected by that bond that we just drew are represented right here in what we've drawn so far. So now let's continue on. Let's draw this carbon-carbon bond right here. It's right there. And that carbon-carbon bond right here represents these two carbon atoms, even though we're not drawing them. And now we have one last bond, and this bond connects these two carbon atoms that are already represented in this molecule. So we're going to be literally drawing a triangle closed up like that. And the three carbon atoms in this molecule are represented at these three positions in the line structure. So hopefully this is kind of starting to feel a little bit comfortable, like maybe it's starting to make a little bit of sense. Let's do one more example with a partially condensed structure. Um, and this one has a double bond in it. So this is going to give us a chance to see how that works. So let's start, um, first of all, looking at all of our hydrogens. They're all attached to carbon, so none of them are going to be drawn. Let's start with this carbon-carbon bond right here. And we're going to represent it like that. And now let's do this carbon-carbon bond next, which is going to go right here. And just to make sure we're very clear, this carbon atom right here is this carbon atom right here. So let's continue going to the right. What do we have next? We have a carbon-carbon double bond. And we, in a line structure, we're gonna represent double and triple bonds the same way that we would represent in a Lewis structure, two lines or three lines. So now we have these four carbons in our structure and we're ready to continue. Next over, we have, um, another carbon. So we have this carbon-carbon bond. This carbon is located right here. So we need to draw a bond to the CH2, this guy right there, and we're going to angle it. And you might be wondering, is there a convention, a direction in which we angle it? There isn't. You can angle it whichever way you want, whatever looks pretty. So where are we at now? We have these carbons that are drawn, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We need one more carbon atom, this guy right here. And let's go ahead and draw him like that. 